Hey team, what's happening? My sister lives out in Colorado and when I visited her in I think it was 2014, we ended up playing with a slack line. I tried slack lining before this and I was never able to walk very far, maybe one step at most. But for some reason on that day, I was able to get a good knee drop in and walk the entire line back and forth with only one or two hours of practice. If you're interested in learning how to do the cooler version of walking a tightrope, here's a guide for when you have your first slack line. Let's get into it. Slacklining is one of those things that I really can't teach and have you immediately be good at. It's just a novelty movement that takes some time for your body to adjust. So practice is key here. But the good news is, I think everybody can do it, especially if they're determined. Before we walk on it, we gotta set it up. When you get your slack line, you're gonna have two things, a ratchet and a line. If you're environmentally friendly, I would suggest these soft tree wraps. The slack line goes under a lot of tension, and although it's not gonna bring a tree down, it might scrape up the bark and make a scenic park look less than perfect. Let's keep our parks looking good. You want to set the tree wrap around the tree or whatever post you're going to be using. Just make sure it's incredibly solid. I wouldn't suggest a porch leg or anything along those lines. Then wrap the line over the wrap. You can set the height of the line to be anywhere above knee height. I'll suggest this height because your slack line will have some sag and you don't want to be scraping the ground when you're walking, especially when you're in the middle. You can fold the line over like this if you don't have any stabilizing apparatuses. This isn't the best way to keep the line flat, but it's a quick and easy way. From here, make sure the line has no twists or turns in it. Put the end of the line in the ratchet like this. Pull the end down and under so it comes right under the inserted fabric. Pull tight, keep everything in line, and then you can start to ratchet. I'm using two different types of ratchets here to show you the difference. After ratcheting, lock the handle in place and test out the line before you go full force. Now you're ready to start using the line once you set it up properly. The first step is getting on. Some people suggest starting from the very end of the line. This is because the line wobbles more. The closer you get towards the middle, the looser it is and the longer it is. Starting from the end starts you off more rigid so you're able to balance as if it were a handrail or a curb and slowly introduce the slackiness. The issue is the slack line is not rigid, it's slack. The motor patterns and techniques you need to develop on a rigid line are different than a slack line. This is why other people suggest starting towards or at the middle. This is where you'll find the slack and learn the specific techniques you'll need to balance. The issue here is that you'll probably not get very far since it's such an unfamiliar discipline. I would suggest that you choose a starting point that works for you. And don't be afraid to switch it up. If you start in the middle, I would suggest having somebody help you mount and a spotter. One of the first steps in most skills is to learn what to do if things go wrong. The nature of the slack line is, well, slack. It's bouncy, it's wiggly. However, it is predictable. The line is like a trampoline. And when you're about to fall off, if you jumped as if you were on flat ground, the line will just absorb the force and not move you anywhere. You're likely to get slapped in the hamstring or faceplant doing this. Instead, let your weight sink down to the line, like you would a trampoline, and let the line bounce you off. Avoid doing this. Another tip is where to put your hands. When your hands are up, you change where your center of mass is. The higher you put your hands, the higher your center of mass. This utilizes the same principle that makes balancing a longer object on your finger easier than balancing a shorter one. When you're on the slack line, you're the stick. You have what's referred to as rotational inertia about the slack line. 
the taller you can be, the more time and distance it will take for you to go from being completely upright to hitting the floor. Compared to if your center of mass was lower due to putting your hands down or maybe in your pockets. Although you're not moving your mass too much by getting your hands up, it provides enough time for you to make significant micro adjustments and get your feet under you. In addition to getting your hands up, you also want to get your hands wide. This is to adjust where your center of mass is to the left and to the right of the slack line very quickly without having to move your feet. The end result is keeping your arms up and wide, flailing around like you're an airman at a car dealership. But hey, it works and it's the most advantageous position to stay upright. The last tip I'll give is to take breaks. Remember the first time you did, well, anything? Maybe the first time you did a lunge or a push up. If you were new to a movement, you might find yourself shaking or really straining. Slackline is no different. You're gonna find yourself shaking and twitching maybe before you even get on. This is because in short, your neuromuscular system has to figure out what motor units to fire and when to fire them for the most efficient movement. The unfortunate thing is that the shaking vibrates the line. You know what's harder than balancing on a slack line? Balancing on a vibrating slack line and you shaking only compounds the issue until you fall off. To remedy this, take breaks. You have an unbelievable body that can learn movements within minutes or hours. Give yourself five minutes of trying and then stop for like five or ten. Incorporate your breaks and stick with them. This will also help with the inevitable frustration you may feel after failing over and over. Again, I truly feel this skill is something that you may not learn immediately after learning a few tips. These tips are ones that will help you in the long run and maybe help you understand exactly what you're doing. So practice is key, along with knowing how to dismount, knowing to put your hands up, and taking breaks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or concerns about slacklining. If you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Thank you for watching, good luck, keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.